Hello, my name is Shelley. I'm the priest at St. Martin's Bay Ridges Anglican Church in Pickering, Ontario, and we welcome you to morning prayer on our Vestry Sunday. Let us pray. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth, mouth shall, shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, Lord make, make haste to help us. us. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. The earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, the world, and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas, and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false, and do not swear deceitfully, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, Selah. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. The Proclamation of the Word. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked to, on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him, from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind? and grief in my heart 
day after day. How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Our second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought back from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace, what then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sins, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you get then from the things which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage is you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be you. to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Sunday is our Vestry Sunday. I'm sure many of us never thought we would host a virtual Vestry as we plan to gather this afternoon over Zoom. For those of us who are joining and may not know what a Vestry meeting is, I'll explain a bit of what that means for you today. A vestry meeting is where we look at the other aspects of our church, such as financial matters, take stock of what we have done, and set goals for what we might like to accomplish going forward. We participate in these decisions together prayerfully as a community. I find it fitting that our gospel reading today is on hospitality, and I will share more of this uh, in a moment. But I want us to briefly recap our gospel text for today. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the disciples being named and called and being allowed to participate in God's work. Indeed, today's text seems to be a continuation of that theme. Here, Jesus is telling the disciples that they are linked to him in the work that they do. Those who welcome Jesus' disciples welcome him. 
Indeed, through welcoming others, God is welcome. While we recall that Jesus warned in the past that not everyone would be welcome, but those who showed welcome should reciprocate in kind. In our own modern world, the way we welcome has been something we have been looking at as a culture and as the wider church. We as a society have been called to question how we accept others who are different from us and look at how we come together, especially now under a global pandemic. As we see from this passage of scripture this morning, our identity is wrapped up in Jesus and how we treat others reflects this. Going back to our vestry, I mentioned that I thought that this passage was fitting for our meeting for today. Part of what we do as a church involves welcoming others in so many ways. We welcome in words and in actions. Likewise, you all welcomed me to St. Martin's on March 1st of this past year. When I originally wrote my vestry letter to the congregation, I had no idea of what would be the case with COVID-19 and all that would happen and all the changes that would take place. And as is the tradition here at St. Martin's for this year, I will recap some of what I wrote in my vestry letter this morning. And I wrote my vestry letter on Ash Wednesday between the ending of my curacy and before my start date here at St. Martin's. I remember being quite struck by the joy at St. Martin's. And even during this time of pandemic, there is still a lot of joy here. Since I've been here, I am excited by all that I have heard about the history of St. Martin's. And I also await in anticipation for what we will discern as we move forward together. St. Martin strikes me as a place that tries to be mindful to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that we will be able to do that together. In the past few months, I have gotten to know some of you, and I look forward to getting to know everyone even more. While most of our time together so far has been apart physically, we have remained connected through phone calls, emails, and online worship services. We have managed to have Bible studies over conference calls and connected in ways we had not thought possible before. While we wait with hopeful anticipation for the fall, I want to recap some of what I hope that we can discern together. I'm still excited to listen to you and to hear your stories. I want to know who you are as a people and what has brought you to where you are now as a community. But more than that, I want to know where you feel God is calling us to be as we journey forward together. This will involve visioning and listening to each other. It will also involve us listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit and I pray we will be open to doing so together. Another place where I feel God is calling us to is to listen intentionally outside of our walls. While St. Martin's has already done an amazing job of that already, the demographics of Pickering and the surrounding areas are changing. And I think being, part, being the hands and feet of Jesus involves us partnering with agencies in our wider community. Of course, this will be something that we do together. But the way that the church does mission work has changed. And in order to reflect Jesus, we need to see where we can partner with other agencies, both Christian and secular, in order to effectively continue to minister to all, of, all people. The goal of the church hasn't changed, but how we participate in God's mission has. I pray that we are open to these new ways and ideas. While COVID-19 has changed how a lot of our world functions, Perhaps we have an opportunity to respond to the needs of the community in different ways. And I pray that this is something that we will all pray about together in the upcoming season. How we connect to families is also really important. And I think we will need to continue to pray about where God is calling us to be light and salt to those families in our wider world. And I am thankful that there are great Sunday school and youth programs here at St. Martin's. And I give thanks to those who faithfully serve in these ministries, both in the past and now in the present. Be assured that I am very supportive and excited by the work that the St. Martin's community has done and continues to do. Our regular activities, outreach, and missions will continue as we invest in them. Yet there may be other new avenues that we may be called to explore as we grow and learn together. 
Again, with COVID-19 being our new reality and the changes that come with living under this pandemic situation, we have to discern how we can be the hands and feet of Jesus given this new and changed landscape. I'm sure during, during our journey together, we will uncover and discern more of where God is leading us to grow and go as a community. Yet I pray that we will intentionally pray about some of these areas that I have mentioned this morning. Let us work together with a renewed sense of mission as we grow into where God is calling us to grow. I still await the day where I can see everyone again in person, but for now, I am encouraged through the ways we have gotten to know each other so far, and I look forward to getting to know everyone even more. I will end this morning by pointing us back to Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Our witness as Christians matter, and how we show welcome and accept acts of welcome and kindness matter. Let us continue to welcome in the way that Jesus welcomes us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Together, let us say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. We pray for reconciliation and truth in our land. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. We pray for all who are affected by COVID-19 in any way, shape, or form. We pray for all who work and serve in essential industries and services. We pray for all those who care for others. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those on our hearts and minds and remember those on our parish list. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love fulfills the law. May we love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And may we love our neighbors as ourselves through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever, amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore, 
Amen.